Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is How to Use Blender for Absolute Beginners and welcome to episode 1. So I'm going to skip ahead where to get Blender, how to download Blender because I'm pretty sure at this point anyone who's in this tutorial is going to have Blender installed. If you don't, I'll leave a link in the description in the video. So when you open Blender for the first time it'll probably look something very similar to this with this little um, pop-up just here with a few little links and whatnot uh, just click anywhere in Blender to get rid of that and then you'll be presented with this window right here now for anyone that has used um, something like Unity, Unreal, CryEngine this whole view may look somewhat familiar but not necessarily entirely familiar because there are a lot of subtle differences and people have window setups differently in different engines so if you want to know what Blender is, in a nutshell, the best way to describe it is it's a free modeling engine by where you can create models, style them, animate them and import them into Unity or Unreal or pretty much any other engine to be honest. So <clears throat> I'm going to get straight into this. At the very top we have something called the info panel and this is where we have the file, render, window, help. It's got just Info basically, that's why it's called the info panel. Um, one thing to make note of before we begin though is in this info panel up here you'll have this option to choose the engine to render in. Hopefully it should be set as Blender Render by default. If not, I would recommend at this point setting it to Blender Render. There are other options. Things like Cycles Render, that is for people who want to get really in depth. These people here are people who have learned Blender from scratch and have built their way up and are quite advanced. So by the end of it, maybe you will be using this type of engine. But for now, as this is a beginner, I would recommend uh, Blender Render. So next down here, we have the view window menu. And this is relative to this big window here, which is the view window. Now much in the same way as a development engine, the view window is where all the action goes on and where all creation occurs. And the view window menu here is a way of changing things within this view window. So for example, you can see at the moment in this view window, we have two objects. We have a camera here and a cube here. So we have our cube selected and if we were to translate, we could then use the mouse to move this object around and when we're happy where it is we can press enter and put it there. Same applies for rotate, you can click on the rotate and you can rotate that object as such, hit enter once you're done. Same with scale, hit enter. And you've got a few other options down here, you can create new objects, uh, animation and whatnot but for now uh, we'll leave it stuck on tools because we'll use these different options as we go through the series. Now I'm going to show you a quick keyboard shortcut. In most um, programs, especially within Windows, Control Z or Control Z is undo. But if you hold Control Alt and press Z or Z, it gives you a history. So we could go back a couple of steps straight away to original, which puts our cube back in the center of this scene. Over here we have the outline panel and this is, you can think of it as like a hierarchy. So in Unreal or Unity where you have all your objects within the scene, this is the exact same sort of thing. I know by default Unity has it over on the left, um, but it's over here on the upper right. Below that we have the properties panel. This is the one where we set things like materials, textures and we deal with physics and all kinds of stuff here and you can see that there are quite a lot of options even just with one object selected. I'd say there are a lot of options to get your head around. For a beginner it may appear very daunting especially looking at some of these numbers and all different options that there are but gradually as we get used to Blender we'll go through all these different options one by one and get used to them. So the next thing I'm going to go to is this just down here. Now I'm not going to explain every little thing along here but one thing I do need to explain first off are these little boxes just here. Now these represent different layers within this one particular scene. So 
if you're working on separate objects, which is maybe lots of complicated objects all at once, and you want to focus on just one, you would put it on different layers. So if by some chance your work seems to suddenly disappear on you, best thing to do is first off check these boxes here and make sure you have the right one selected. So if you start at your project, looks like this and you think, oh, where is my work gone? Where's my object gone? Just check out these layers down here and make sure you have the right layer selected. At the very bottom here, we have something called the timeline panel. This is mainly used for animation. So a good example of this is if you've created a model in here, let's say a cat, and you want to get your cat walking in Unity or Unreal, rather than create the animation in the game engine, you can create it in the Blender engine and animate it perfectly within Unity. You would use this down here, the animation, to set the frame. And relative to that, you can see here, I have what's something called one in brackets and cube. Now what this is, is that means frame one, and this is the object selected. So for example, if I was to click on my camera, that would change to one camera. So let's click back on my cube. Now, a, a good way of um, getting used to Blender is to play around at first. So realistically, you can do different things within it. So let's check out a few of the commands and controls that we can use. So if you hold down your middle mouse wheel, you can pan around the actual scene, like so. Obviously, the scroll is the middle mouse wheel scrolling in and out. Uh, right click, select your object. So right click on the camera, right click on the cube, right click on the lamp, which is the light source, I should mention. So remember, right click to select an object. Left click moves this cursor around. It's not too important. Well, you can do that as well with right click. So if you hold right click down, you can move it. And if it's in a place you want, you can either press left click or enter. So let's undo that. So let's do control Z to put it back center. So the axis you'll have here, the red, green, and blue is the same as pretty much any other game engine. The X is represented by the red arrow. The Z is represented by the blue arrow and the Y is represented by the green arrow. Uh, so what we can do here is rather than, for example, create something over here, let's say we want to put a cone in. So we can either go to our create menu in the view window and click on cone and it inserts that there. So let's undo. Or we could use shift and A. And it brings up a little menu in the middle of the view window and we can insert an object here so let's put in just for example a mesh and let's put in a sphere nice and simple if at any point you ever get stuck lost or confused in blender there is a neat little thing that you can do if you press spacebar you can search for something you want to do so for example how do i undo Let's type undo, and there we go. You can do that. Undo history, which is control alt Z, and undo, which is just control Z. So let's do control alt Z, and let's go back to our original. Okay, perfect. So what we'll do now is let's alter the shape of this particular cube. If you press tab with your cube selected, you'll notice that the cube itself turns a more orange color and a lot of the outline turns a more solid orange. This tab key makes you go into something called edit mode. Now edit mode is a way of controlling how this cube will look or how any object looks within this view window. So if we were to take our middle mouse wheel and scroll in, and turn it around a little to about there, what we can do now is if we go on to our cube over here, uh, press the little plus button just there, and now click on the cube again, you'll see that also occurs. So that's two different ways you can get into edit mode of any object. So you can move around with the right mouse button again. So let's undo. 
and you can move it up and down and if you hold control you can snap it so rather than move it freely you would use the snap settings to move it to a specified point i.e. you would move it exactly one or exactly five or exactly whatever you have it set to so let's escape that let's pan it round now let's right click on one of these little dots now this this little dot in particular is called a vertex the plural of that is vertices so this particular cube has eight vertices and we have just one vertex selected so what we can theoretically do now is we can expand this outwards so once it's selected if you right click on let's say the y-axis which is the green you can pull it out and free move it so that's how you can change the shape of an object if you hold control the snap works as well so you can see you snap it in certain lengths in whichever direction so let's undo and there we go okay so what we'll do now is let's see what can we do let's bring our shape out so let's uh, select this vertex hold control hold down the right mouse button and move the green outwards so hold uh, control drag it outwards and then hit enter so let's do it with this one so we can move it out hold control move it to there let go of the right mouse button whilst keeping hold of control and hit enter and there we go so you can then free move it if you wanted to but we don't like that so if it's not as you like hit escape and then undo so let's move it out to I tell you what, let's move this vertex here let's bring it outwards so let's right click on there and hold it down and control shift to bring it there whilst keeping hold of control press enter and there we go let's spin it round let's go underneath to about here and let's select this vertex hold control and select this vertex so we now have two vertices selected let's spin around and let's move them outwards this way so we can select the x-axis make sure both are selected there a bit of trouble there okay let's spin it around a little bit let's get it looking just fine and there we go so we can move both at the same time let's say to about there and let's hit enter and there we go so our cube has now morphed into this rather strange looking shape and essentially this is how pretty much any model can be done now you could theoretically make any model from the initial cube which is brought to you by default it's entirely up to you you could start a fresh one and create the vertices yourself we'll go into that eventually so for now before we end this let's make sure we have our project saved worst thing that can ever happen in blender is you create this very fancy model and it crashes or you forget to save or anything could happen and all that time is gone nice and simple file save as up here let's call this i'm going to call it jv blender and then click save as blender file okay so next episode uh, i think we'll actually make an object maybe like we'll have something simple like a crate or something an actual physical crate where it has an inside to it we'll play around with the vertices more we'll check out lots of different options we may recap over a couple couple of things because we'll be using different things a lot Getting used to the mouse controls can be quite daunting when it comes to Blender, especially if you're very much used to something like Unreal. It is a little bit different. 
Same with Unity, the controls are a little bit different. So working with both at the exact same time can be a little bit frustrating because you can end up doing something wrong. But once you get used to it, it's pretty easy. So yeah, until next episode, play around with your shapes, add shapes in, mess around, see what you can come up with, maybe create something different. And eventually we'll move on to multiple different things. And by the end of this series, you'll be able to create something quite nice within Blender. So guys, until next episode, thanks for watching.